Hello, in this video we will consider how to calculate the length of polar curves. We saw with parametric equations that given equations x as a function of theta and y as a function of theta where theta is between alpha and beta, we can obtain the length of the curve on the interval by calculating the integral from alpha to beta of the square root of the derivative of x with respect to theta squared plus the derivative of y with respect to theta squared d theta. Let's see what becomes of this equation when we begin with a polar equation. When given the polar equation r as a function of theta or r equals f of theta, we find parametric equations for x and y using x equals r cosine of theta and y equals r sine of theta. When we take a look at the quantity underneath the square root inside the integral for the arc length formula, dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared is going to be the square of the derivative of f of theta cosine of theta plus the square of the derivative of f of theta sine of theta. When we take the derivative inside those squared quantities, we're going to get f prime of theta cosine of theta minus f of theta sine of theta, and f prime of theta sine of theta plus f of theta cosine of theta. And then when we expand those, we see that we can perform some algebra and simplify. We see we have f prime of theta squared times cosine of squared, and f prime of theta squared times sine squared, and we also have f of theta squared sine squared, and f of theta squared cosine squared. When we simplify those pieces, we get f prime of theta squared times the Pythagorean identity, which will simplify to 1, and f of theta squared times 1. So that we get the derivative of r with respect to theta squared plus r squared. And this is under the radical inside the integral for the arc length formula. So for the length of the polar graph, we can calculate the integral from alpha to beta of the square root of f prime of theta squared plus f of theta squared d theta, which is simply the integral from alpha to beta of the square root of dr d theta squared plus r squared d theta. This is a de derivation that you should be able to perform on your own. Let's see how we apply this arc length formula then. If we start with the curve r equals negative 6 sine of theta, where theta is between 0 and pi, we can take the integral from 0 to pi of the square root of the square of the derivative of negative 6 sine of theta plus the square of negative 6 sine of theta, d theta, and we simplify, and we get the integral from 0 to pi of 6 d theta, which is simply going to be 6 pi units. If we dig a little bit deeper, we can make sense of the length of this curve by considering its Cartesian equation. When r is equal to negative 6 sine theta, if we take a look at its graph and we compare its graph to its polar graph, we're going to see that on the interval from 0 to pi over 2, the radius is negative and it decreases from 0 to, to negative 6. We see th that for theta between pi over 2 and pi, the radius is still negative but it increases from negative 6 to 0. And when we plot the polar curve, we see we have a circle, and it seems to be centered at 0, negative 3, with radius 3. If we start with the equation r equals negative 6 sine of theta and multiply both sides by r, we get r squared equals negative 6r sine of theta, r squared is simply x squared plus y squared, r sine of theta is simply y, so we get x squared plus y squared equals a negative 6y, adding 6y to both sides, and then completing the square, we see that we get x minus 0 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 3 squared, which means that we have a circle centered at 0, negative 3, with radius 3. So it makes sense that our circle has a circumference then of 2 pi r or 2 pi times 3, which is 6 pi units. Let's consider a second example. Suppose we want to find the length of the curve r equals 4 sine squared of theta over 2, where theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Again, we begin with the arc length formula, so we'll take the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of the square of the derivative of r plus r squared. So when we take the derivative of r with respect to theta, we'll need to apply the chain rule. And so we'll have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of 4 times, we bring our power down, 2 times the sine of theta over 2, and then take the derivative of what's inside, times the cosine of theta over 2 times 1 half, quantity squared plus our r, r squared. 
And when we square both of those quantities under the square root, we see that we have a factor of 4 squared sine squared of theta over 2 in each term, which then leaves cosine squared theta over 2 plus sine squared theta over 2 times 4 squared sine squared theta over 2, all under the square root inside the integral. So simplifying, we get the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 4 sine theta over 2 d theta. We can easily integrate that, and our answer is 16 for the length of the curve of 4 sine squared theta over 2 on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. If we summarize and consider the main ideas from this video, recall that the formula for the length of a polar curve, namely um, the integral from alpha to beta of the square root of the square of the derivative plus the square of r d theta, simply is derived from the arc length formula for a parametric curve given here. This is a derivation that you should be able to perform. Secondly, when working with polar equations, check to see if you can convert the polar equation to a Cartesian equation using x equals r cosine of theta and y equals r sine of theta. This may reveal a common graph for which it's easy to calculate the length.